brother! And welcome everyone to another Super Carlin Brothers review. Today, we are talking Spider-Man Far From Home. This will be a spoiler review. Yeah, today we're gonna dive in and try to answer the question, will Peter Parker be the next Iron Man? Are you going to VidCon? No way! We're going to VidCon! If you see us there, make sure you say hey. And if you want to make sure you see us there, we are hosting a meet and greet in Hall D on Friday, July 12th from 5 to 6 p.m. And on Saturday from 2.30 to 3.30 p.m., we're going to be out on the expo floor at the eSports truck, like the giant trailer thing, yeah. playing video games. And you get to come up and face off with us, and you'll probably win because we're not very good. Not very good. See you there. So far from home. Mm hmm End of phase three. End of phase three. Weirdly, I think we said that wrong. In, in last, our, week's video. last week's video, where yeah. we were like, it's the kickoff of phase four. And then, I don't think it is. Realistically, I think it's a pretty blurry line. To me, it's almost like a standalone in between phases movie, it, if you ask me. It would it would be mm -hmm. weird to me. Like, I almost, like, I know, like, Marvel officials have come out and said, no, this is the end of phase three. I, like, fundamentally disagree with it. Like, I you know. mean Endgame is not the end? And it has the word end in it. Right. Also, you know, like, it's, yeah, it's like a nice little, it's like the epilogue, really, is what it's, it is. It's like an epilogue. I, that's, I'm happy to give it epilogue, epilogue status. Epilogue status. Uh, but I would say end of phase three is still over. This is just the epilogue to this phase three. This is just three. epilogue to phase three. So that's it's what I'm also saying. not the start to phase four. Anyway. They are pretty self aware about it in the movie. Yes, like, they are. I, think, I don't know if it was Peter or Ned. They literally say, like, move on to a new phase of our lives, like, in like the first five minutes. And it was like, well, that's not unintentional oh, at all. I think it's during like the the morning broadcast. I think. Yeah, oh, you're uh, right. It's Betty. Betty says it. Yep. Yes. Yep. Ready to move on to a new phase. And then at the very end, when they're doing like the web swing through New York City, like they have like the one, two, three question mark, and it's like we can't wait to show you what's next. And you're like, well, that's obviously phase four, right? Right. There, right. So. Right. <laughs> I thought that was a cool Easter egg because like. Oh, me too. It sort of introduces a new kind of Easter egg altogether, like where it's literally speaking to like the production order of the movie. I know it's like like they use phase four, yeah, almost as like a production term, but now they're like, no, they're literally we're putting them in the movies. We right. are aware of them inside the movie. And you're like, okay. I wonder if like the DVD box sets, mm -hmm. like if you'll buy like phase one, phase oh, two, like they'll come as like clusters. As, that's very interesting. Like like you'd buy a Star Wars trilogy. Right. Right. As if you would buy physical DVD boxes though. When is the last physical DVD you bought? I do not know. Maybe for our younger brother for Christmas a few years ago. Mm -hmm. It was a Blu-ray. Okay. Yeah. I think the last one I came to own was sent to us by someone and it was a DVD, or it was a Blu-ray of the Peanuts movie. Oh, but signed, signed by members of the Schultz family. Yes, which, which was very was cool. Really cool. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's not what we're talking about. Also has nothing at all to do with Spider-Man, unless secretly, no, that won't happen. But possibly, <laughs> no, definitely not. Anyway, what did you think of this movie? Dude, I just loved it. I know. I mean, I didn't really know. I, I expected to like it. I was really excited about Mysterio um, being the villain. I thought, it was like, okay, well, there's... There, it. Okay, there is such a trend in media right now about subverting expectations like you think this is going to happen we set you up boom that's not what happens we've undercut the trope or whatever All right so mysterio though is like the ultimate well-known villain of like he's the villain of like he's gonna present the wrong way and then be the villain right right like so and he's pre sure enough in all the trailers he's like i'm a good guy right and he's played by Jake Gyllenhaal, and you're like, okay, okay. But if they really, really wanted to, like, sub-subvert the expectation, like, you'd be waiting the whole movie for them to pull the rug out and be like, nope, he's a bad guy, just like you expected, but for him to just be a good guy. Just be a good so, guy. But it's weird, because, like, I wonder if they knew people would wonder, like... Like, just on the edge of your imagination, what if? Oh, what if? I totally think they did. I, I feel like the entire Nick Fury twist, uh -huh. like, is built in specifically because you're like, well, there's no way Nick Fury doesn't know. 
Like, there's no oh, way he's you're duped right. Nick Fury. Exactly. That's sort of the thing. That's what sells you on it, maybe more, especially in the trailers, is that, like, he's duped Nick Fury. Right. And But it, it is funny, because it's, like, it's easy to sit here and be like, I didn't feel like Nick Fury was really being very Nick Fury. You know, something felt off the whole time. Because, like, you can't prove that or anything. But sure. it did, I mean, I'm going to say it. It felt like Nick Fury was a little bit off. But even then, he's like, I've been gone for five years. And you're like, oh, yeah, he's probably just been gone for five years. That was the thing. Okay, so the first pass, I get through to the end, and I was sort of like, well, that seemed weird. And, like, I'm not sure that they, like, did a good good enough job explaining, like, why Nick Fury would, would have, like, a chip or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, second pass, though, there I think it's right when he runs into Peter in, where he, like, is in his room with the Trank gun. Yeah. And he says something along the lines of like, I've been gone for five years, no team, no intel, no anything. And it's right. like, you could sort of get all of a sudden how much the world might have changed in seemingly what's like nothing for him. You know, right. this, this blip of time where he was gone and he was back. Yeah. Um, and so that's interesting. Like, they, I thought there there was enough to explain it. Yeah. Like, maybe he would be a little bit ignorant. Like, maybe he is trying right. to play catch up. Uh, it is funny they put that layer of protection around the, like, Nick Fury is a little bit off. Right. Like, to totally throw you off the scent. And it totally did. Like, when he transformed into Talos at the end, I was like, what? That's crazy. No way. But it also preserves Nick Fury as always knowing what's up. Oh, I know. Like, like, he's just, like, up there, like, what? He's not even concerned at the very end when they call him, and he's like, yeah, I gave him the glasses, that went to, that, that didn't go as according to plan. It was real bad. And he's like, whatever, I don't even. Right, yeah, click. Like, what, you gave it to Peter? Yeah, he handled it. It's whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. Not worried about that. So, that being said, like, in the movie, how did you, how did you like Mysterio? So, like, the very first thing we see, I think even before, like, the Marvel little, like, uh, kind of Oh yeah, like you don't want any part of this. Yeah, like we see him first. He's introduced right out of the game. Right away. Um, And then we sort of see him like emerge as this hero. Mm -hmm. Um, The elementals are pretty crazy. That's one where another where you're not really sure how he could be faking it. Oh yeah, like I even wrote it down. Like when the water monster pops up in Venice, like Peter gets punched twice, and he's like actually soaking wet. Right. You know, so you're like, man. That is, that's cool. Right, like, it's it's like, well, and that's the thing too, is like how how were they getting away with it? Like how is he right. able to create something that's fake but it's also causing damage? And it's like, they even explain that. It's like, he is He's causing, causing damage. damage. Right, like they've got guns, they're blowing stuff up. They're pushing the water around. They have sonic booms. These drones are... Impressive, right? And the way and, he's getting away with it is yeah. he's not there at all. Yeah, like yeah. He, he's, he's standing, not doing it. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's the sneaky thing is that like, uh, that's what's so cool is he's not flying around at all. Mm-hmm. It's just like mm-hmm. it's all a hologram. It's like, uh, you, oh, like they went like a step further behind what you believe about holograms. Yes. You know, you're like, oh, no, oh, why didn't I just think bigger? <laughs> right. I know. Yeah. 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 It's of like course. Like, it's like how is he getting like is it like cable system or something like yeah. There must be problems with that. But no, the entire thing is just sort the of entire like thing is the thing set up. Oh, um, so the first time I like watched it too, I wrote like the fact that Peter personally gets hit twice by the water monster. It's just like okay now. What are the odds of this? Oh, yeah. But then it's like, nope, that's part of the tell because it's like they're specifically targeting Peter because. Right. Yeah. Right. It's like, ah, right. But that's the sort of thing that I feel like in other, su- like, older superhero movies, they would have just been like, oh, it just so happened that Peter Parker was there. And wouldn't he know it? He was in the middle of the action. Weird. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so, no, this was very intentional, though. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> Peter, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of my favorite lines. Where's the fire monster? Here. Peter, we're here. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, super good. Uh, but no, okay, so going back to Mysterio real quick. The uh, the one thing from the first time I watched it that I was so curious about the second time I watched mm-hmm. it is there's the scene after Nick Fury, like, rages on Peter, and he's, like, sitting up on the wall, and Mysterio comes floating up and sits next to him and they have this like heart to heart. Yeah. They cannot touch. Oh. Because that's not, like, he's not actually he's there. He's not actually there. Oh, you're right. And I think about that one. They don't. They do they not don't touch actually the entire touch. time. Wow. Yeah. And I oh. kept thinking, I kept thinking, I was like. They're going to blow it. They're going to blow it by like having him like put his, you know, give him a high five or something, you know, like, mm-hmm. or put his hand on his shoulder. Ooh. They do not touch the entire time. So literally. Peter is is talking to a hologram. Just a hologram. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the other thing I really liked about Mysterio is, like, if you've ever seen behind the scenes on any, like, production work for guys who are, like, in big suits like this, yeah. what they're actually wearing 
is this weird jumpsuit with all the like X markers and yeah. stuff like that. So they like the the graphics people know where to place all the stuff. Yeah. Um, I thought it was just so cool that like inside the movie you're watching somebody wear one of those suits like on purpose. Right. Yeah, that is funny. <laughs> because like if if ever you spotted that at all, that would be like a monster mistake. And here it is like center screen, yeah. like right in the middle well, of the frame. Well, that I think in particular is like a total call out to the industry. Sure. Because I don't know if you watched Scott's latest video on Nerd Sync about why he loves Mysterio or whatever. If you uh, want to subscribe, a really link good in the video. description Just down check below. Check that out. Yeah. yeah, check out Nerd Sync. Very good channel. Um, there is, he, that whole video is about how the uh, special effects crew that made like Life of Pi. Is it Life of Pi? The one, the one with the kid in the, the boat with the, the kid tiger. In the boat with the tiger. We all know it. You know it. Anyway, they put in all this work to get this Oscar now. They win the Oscar and then they like play them off the stage like 30 seconds into their speech. Like they didn't give them enough time. Right. And like Life of Pi goes on to win all these other things. And it's just like, that was the main thing that made the movie stand out. Sure. And there's this big, anyway, the overarching story is that the like, uh, visual effects department just did not get their due. Like, they didn't get to give, like, their their toast, their speech, their thank you thing. But then there's this big scene in the movie where Mysterio gets up on the bar and is, like, giving a speech and giving full-on 30 seconds of credit to, you know, extras, essentially. Yes, it totally, yeah. it totally felt like, you know, the, the special effects, like, voice was being said aloud yeah. all of a sudden, where it's yeah. like, you guys are the unsung heroes here. Which, by the way, I love that speech. Like, yeah. Even the moment where he goes from this, like, hero figure uh, that, like, you know, Peter can all of a sudden look up to, even down to putting on the glasses. Like, Jake Gyllenhaal looks like oh, Tony Stark. Oh, my gosh. And it's like, a, like, it gave me chills where I was like, holy crap. Oh, my like, gosh. Like, I see what they did. Like, the whole gag with the glasses, and as far as I'm concerned, was for that, that moment. moment. Oh, and it's just, like, you don't realize it at all, like, Jake Gyllenhaal just looks like Jake Gyllenhaal. Right. But like, as soon as he put the glasses on, it was, it was like, but also, let me tell you, the moment Peter is like, here, you try them on. Like, the, there was like, I don't know if you heard it, but like in our theater, the first time we heard, there was like, like an audible, like, <gasps> oh, like, like oh, everyone, no. like everyone's like, no, 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 <laughs> don't, don't do, do it. it, don't do it. And it's just like, sure. He does such a good job of selling. He's like, no, Peter, he gave it to you. <laughs> right, right. But like, like you, you literally he could have accepted it right there and it would have been fine. Right. But he like, oh man, it was yeah, really good selling it. He sells it. it hard. But then like, you know, as Peter walks away and like you sort of see like, what they're literally just sitting in like an, an abandoned building. Yeah. Um, But like as all the layers kind of like peel back and he starts like doing this like kind of like evil maniacal laugh, you're like. <laughs> see, that wasn't so hard. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Yes. It's like. Oh, oh no. God. Oh no. Like I, I, I think Jake Gyllenhaal absolutely crushed it. Oh, it was very I, good. I think he I thought he was spectacular. Yeah, I liked him a lot in there. Um all throughout. Okay, so jumping back to special effects for a second cuz I think we can get off of Mysterio and move into Spidey for a moment. Um one area where I was kind of surprised where it like fell flat a little bit in this movie is the Venice fight scene, which is when they're fighting, I guess Hydro Man, the big like, Oh yeah, like, what, yeah water the water monster. monster. The water yeah. monster. Um, this is the scene where Peter is being Spider-Man, but he's not in his Spider-Man suit. Right. And I feel like it really starts to show almost why they're in spandex suits. Right. Because it's easier to make that look like acceptable. But oh. like when you're seeing him in like a t-shirt with like an open button down or whatever over top of it. Okay. Like I thought the CG was like kind of only okay. Oh, not as good. Yeah. Where I was like, mm. that's weird. And so after seeing that, I was like, I wonder if it's going to be like that for the rest of the movie. Like, I wonder if it falls flat for some reason. And it totally doesn't. Like, every right. other scene where he's in a Spidey suit, it's absolutely it's amazing. It's so hard the, to animate Tom Holland. It's hard to animate, like, a real person doing mm -hmm. the thing. Whereas if you're doing Spider-Man's face, which has two giant white eyeballs, like, right. you know, it's like, that's not hard to <laughs> right. to work with. It's not, it's not as... Yeah, particularly. Interestingly, though, they actually had some practical effects for the suit once he went into the black suit, where he had like the open and close eyes, yeah. which I like too. I like like when it's like they're physically wearing something, right? As opposed to like early on, he's got the the Iron Spider suit on, which is like, oh right, you know? right, right, yes, yeah. And yes. then Mysterio's like fishbowl, just sort of. You know. So we see him in several different suits in this movie. Yeah, he's got the Iron Spider suit. He's got the OG uh, suit. OG suit. Then he's got the black suit and then the fourth suit that he actually makes. He actually makes, yeah. Yeah. Um, what? That scene. 
really cool. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. like literally. We're gonna come. We'll come back to that. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. We'll right. <sighs> I'm getting, getting so excited. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But no, so I thought there was a couple of interesting interesting things with the suits. Uh, for one, I think the charity event that Spider-Man is at is like hysterically weak. Oh, like right. it's so bad. Yeah. Like Peter's just like, thank you. Yeah. And it's like, that's it. <laughs> like, it's funny because like when he's fighting the bad guys, he still has like the quips and stuff and like the funny one-liners, but then like in front of a big crowd, he's just like he has no idea what to do. Right. Even right. though there's like, I mean, uh, like his his performance is weak, obviously the event like they, the check Pepper is giving them like half a million dollars or something. Right, right. so it's very Ridiculous. successful. Very yeah. successful event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I thought there were a couple of interesting teases for potential future things going on in this for movie. Sure. Uh, I, I don't know, if does Flash ever go on to be a villain or is he mm -hmm. just sort of like the high school bully? No, I think at one point he becomes Venom. I okay. Think. Um, I think, I know he's definitely the high school bully, but there's a, a definite theme of like, he hasn't seen his parents in a while. Right, right, right. And he like he's like craving attention. Like he's always on the flash mob. Yeah. Like with that, and he's like that's, And he even says like when he's doing his truth moment uh, in the crown jewel vault, where he's like, I make videos so people will like me or whatever. Right, right. It's like yeah. Well, so the, the other thing that I think is interesting that makes him a potential peg for future villain is is his obsession with Spider Man. Yeah. Which absolutely sets up for the idea that <clears throat> Spider-Man is going to fail to, like, save his parents or something like that. Oh, sure, something like that. Because, like, well, uh, when he puts on the Edith glasses, when Peter does, and he can see all the text messages around, like, Flash is texting his parents, like, Mother, Father, haven't heard from you in, like, a couple days. Oh, didn't catch that! Yeah, saw that in the second pass, and I was like, ooh, interesting. Because then when he gets back from the airport, like, his parents don't pick him up. Right, and he's, and like, he's also, like, mother, not mother couldn't make it. And yeah. they're like, no, Mr. Thompson. So... Uh, it seems, uh, like, interesting to me. I'm, like, I'm wondering if they're, like, subbing in Flash for some sort of, like, Harry Osborn-esque Oh, thing. interesting, interesting. And or, like, if, like, his parents aren't there because his, like, Rio dad is Norman Osborn or something, and you're gonna be like, oh, or, you know. I don't know. Maybe him and Peter will like really connect at some point in the future. I, you know, I don't know. I know. Well, and so that's, yeah. the, that's the interesting thing about this. So, uh, like, I like the fact that this iteration of Spider-Man is doing some of its own things. So, mm -hmm. like, MJ in this, like, Michelle Jones yeah. is a character that we've... Just doesn't exist. Like, that it's doesn't not, exist. It's not Mary Jane Watson. Right, exactly. Yeah. So... Me and you, as we were walking out of the theater, we had spotted, like, the Black Dahlia necklace. Mm -hmm. And, like, they had drawn a whole bunch of attention to this necklace, yeah. like, throughout the entirety of the movie. And at the end, it's kind of, like, broken and smashed up, but she's wearing it anyway. And, like, this was me putting on, like, my SCB theory <laughs> right. goggles. But, right. like, mm -hmm. I'm immediately spotting, like, does that look like some type of, you know, bird? Or, like, what is it in the shape of? I know, of? I'm like, I'm like, what, are there any... Like female black bug characters, and I'm like black widow, you know, or right. like you know. And then they, we look up like there is a group of characters called the Black Dahlias, and it's like I don't know. She's carrying the mace, and then at one point she has that whole like it's my anti superpower. Oh yeah, saying, like, saying bow. Yeah, saying bow is like her anti superpower. It's like, do you? Are you saying that you're gonna be like a? Some, you're gonna have like an anti superpower in the future. Because that's the type of you like know? detail if they drop then in like this totally innocuous way. If it comes up later and you see that like right. retroactively, it's like, <gasps> oh. Right. But it's also like, like yeah. But like MJ has never been no. anything. She's no, never she been has anything. Not. So the people we were with walking out of the theater were all like, no, no, stop. Like it's never like that. And it's like, but it could be. Yeah, it's like it she's not. Be. She normally has red hair and she's not normally black. And it's like, yeah, right. come on. There's. It's different. It's different. It's a different version. It's definitely Jones. different. Jones. And yep. yeah. So I don't know. Like, even, even like, I, when I thought of like the idea of like, could she be like the next Black Widow or something? That was kind of like, like, she has like anti superpowers and that she's not really a superhero. Sure. Or sure. not like super powered. At least we don't know yet. Not, pff. well, I mean, like, um, Natasha. Right, right, right. Is right, not. Right. So sure. yeah. Um, so I was like, I can see that. And then also, like, Natasha is, like, introduced in an Iron Man movie. Or, like, in Iron Man 2. And this is Spider-Man 2. Right. And, you know, it's like, there, there's an obvious Peter is the next Iron Man theme going. Right. And Black Widow with Spider-Man. Yeah. So pretty dang good fit. I know. So I'm I like, like it. I don't, like, I don't know. I That'd be a very, very weird turn in, like, a huge... 
uh, right and difference for MJ, but I'd be for it. I'm, you know. I, I think it could be interesting. <laughs> yeah. and, and so here, here's like, you know, as you start circling the drain a little bit on our topic, but like the question as to whether or not, like, so you could, I think you can easily make the argument that Tony Stark ends up being, and Robert Downey Jr. specifically, uh, ends up being like the backbone of phases one through three. Oh, for sure. Like he's yeah. very consistently in the other movies. He's got yep. tons of appearances. Yeah, he's in like 10 movies total, I think. Right, he's yeah. like critically important to so much of the technology, mm -hmm. so much of the success. And I feel like so much of what this movie is about is presenting Peter with this question of like, are you going to be the next, the next Iron, Iron Man? Man. To, um, to which the answer, I think, is yes. Right, but like the coolest thing to me that makes me so <clears throat> ridiculously excited about that prospect mm -hmm. is where Peter's at right now as a 16-year-old kid. Right. So like, I feel like if you're talking about another 10 years worth of runway for these movies to come out before we see like our next endgame level event happen. Right, yeah, yeah the amount of growth that we will get to see that character go through oh, like yeah. gives me shivers it's tremendous like, yeah cuz yeah iron man starts out as like you know like a middle-aged man yes. and he starts as just a older middle-aged man by right. the end of it right and yeah. i mean and he's already like a billionaire like he's got access right. to all the technology so like you know where peter basically has like a few pieces of like major tech and you know like the spidey suit and he's right. got clearly backing from you know, Stark. Stark. Now he's got the Edith glasses. Right. So, so like he's he, got the existing technology. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I, what I'm so excited for is like watching this character who in the beginning is super enthusiastic, in the middle is kind of hesitant and is dealing with this mm -hmm. sort of like superhero life meets personal life dilemma, which is like the classic Spider-Man. Yeah. And ultimately like kind of that cap catching Mjolnir moment where like you see him step out like in front of everyone and right. it's like like everyone's everyone's behind him you right. know and he's got like but that's that's the cat moment the 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 Iron Man moment is the snap right right right, right. The, yeah. the sacrifice yourself for everyone right which to me just big prediction right now like uh Peter Parker will eventually by end of you know phase six ten years from now die <gasps> saving the day yeah, you think it'll you think it'll mirror that nicely? I think one hundred percent is gonna mirror it nicely. Like it. First of all, first of all, the movie literally opens. The very first thing you see is the statue of the Virgin Mary, right? <laughs> like, sure, in face sure. Of the Columbia side to that, and you're like, what? Hmm. What does the Virgin Mary have to do with anything? And you're like, oh right, she gives birth to Jesus. Sure, that's the thing. And then the whole movie is about who's the next Iron Man, and it's like pretty obviously Peter. Like right. he literally sends him a note and he says, for the next Iron Man. And then like Happy has that moment where he's building the suit. And he, oh, when he does that thing with the arm, I'm just like, ah, oh, gonna, my, I was like gonna cry. That that yeah. is like <laughs> like my that's like my favorite moment. Of oh, the whole I know. Thing. Like because you know Happy is seeing. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly the right he's thing. Like, and Peter what? doesn't realize it. Yeah. Like, he doesn't realize it, which is why it has to be him. Right. But then it's like, yeah, but what is the ultimate fate of Iron Man? It's like, he's the one who sacrifices himself for everyone else. Like, he's the Jesus character of that arc. Sure. You know? And like, I don't know. Opening on that statue, to me, pretty much meant he's gonna die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, okay. that's like, okay, that's what's happening. That I get statue, it. ten years from now, he's dying. Yeah, Connor right foreshadowed. Now. Boom. That's awesome. <laughs> that's, there you go. That's my, that's my big picture prediction for Peter Parker. Bold, bold prediction. Yeah. Yep. Oh, Because man. that'll just harken back to like everything he learned from Tony. You know, I bet he tells somebody, also predicted, I bet he eventually tells somebody like, if you can't, if you, like, what does he say about the suit? Like, uh, if you need, if you can't do it without the suit, then you don't deserve to wear it or whatever. Oh, uh, right. Like, you yeah. know, like he's, <laughs> he's gonna, gonna say it to someone. Right, right, right. That would be like one of his stepping stones of growth. Yeah. Is like watching him mm -hmm. um, slowly become someone else's like mentor. Right. You know, which is the idea of at some point like one person will be looking up to him. Right. At some. So we'll. I don't know. Who knows how it could all unfold? But then on top of all that. The Tony Stark, just Iron Man imagery throughout the movie, everywhere they go, there is just like murals and statues and like really like sometimes like vigils with like candles around them, which is also just very like religious y and Sure, you know. sure. So okay, did you get any sense with that, like that there was supposed to sort of still be this idea that Tony is still kind of watching over him, like everywhere he goes? Um 
I don't think it was necessarily like a watching over him. I think it was like the inescapability. Like, he can't properly mourn because he can't, like, separate himself. Like, he is more personally affected by this than almost anyone else. Right, right. Maybe because... besides, like, Pepper and Morgan. Sure. You know, sure. and, like, to that end, like, he's having trouble mourning because not only does he just miss Tony, I think, but also, like, everyone's then possibly looking at him to be Tony. And it's like, he just can't even get over that he died. Right. And it's like, right. he literally can't cross the ocean and get away from it because right. it's still just everywhere. It's everywhere. And it's just like this wall he can't get over for most of the movie. And it's crazy though, because it is, I mean, it's it's in stark contrast, <laughs> not on purpose, of uh, what we saw in Homecoming though, like where mm -hmm. all Peter wants through all of Homecoming is to be a hero. He's like, right. let me at him, let me at him, like, let me help, how can I help? When are we gonna fight villains? Like, yeah. you know, when are we gonna do the thing? And it's just like the complete opposite in this. He's like, right. I don't even want to bring my suit. Like, I right, want to go like, on vacation. I, I, I want to tell the girls to that I like. the world this yeah. summer. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know. It's it's interesting. Yeah. All right. So, moving into another big theme of this movie is like, what is truth? <laughs> which, right. is a, which is a really deep question, first it, of all. <laughs> it's a super big one, but like, it is... Yeah basically constant throughout this like yeah almost nothing is what it seems and there's like so many different like ways that they bring about either the people in universe questioning things or us the audience questioning things or right not knowing who is who and who is who when right um <clears throat> yeah so they yeah they attack it from a bunch of angles yes and it's like i like the way even the way the mid-roll credits and then the post credits like continue to reinforce this theme throughout like Mysterio is like the truth is what people show them or the you know I control the truth and I think at one point MJ says like the concept of objective of the, the concept of objective truth is fading out of the world and you know um I think at one point they say like news never lies which I think <laughs> is almost somewhat commentary on like current political climate, I, whatever yeah, not important yeah, not gonna right. jump into that but um, ultimately, it's like, so you have everything in the movie happen, and, like, then you have the big J. Jonah Jameson reveal with J.K. Simmons, which was amazing. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. I was yeah. like, oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. best perfectly cast character. We, we had just talked about that at lunch that day. Yes, we had. We like, were like, what if they brought him back? And it was like, <laughs> would you be okay with it? And we were all like, yes, of course. Like, who else can play this guy? <laughs> yeah. Like, the how, how could you have Spider-Man without J.J. or Jebison? Like, he's got to get here eventually. Right. Sure enough. There he was. Can't wait. Oh, love that guy. Anyway, um, what's interesting is they introduce that scene right there where, like, Mysterio has been, like, lying to everyone. And then you see that J. Jonah Jameson is either buying into the lie or just perpetuating the lie for his own self-interest. Sure. But whatever, it's... People, some people will believe it. Oh, absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. And so it's like, it's interesting because like you watch it and you're like, oh no, I know what really happened because I watched the movie. But all these people in the city, you know, they're not privy to watching the movie like I was. They're just going to believe what the news says. But, right. But then the post credit scene rolls and then the scrolls switch and you're like, I didn't even know what was happening. Right, you right, know? And right. And it's like, oh man. So it's just like, who knows what to believe. And it's very... Everything, everything got flipped on its head. And I, I yeah. do think that it's like, it's a very interesting theme going forward, uh, like with what this might be setting up for, right. the, for the next phase. Because much like the like Infinity Saga, which is what we just completed with all the Infinity Stones and ultimately Thanos and the Gauntlet, yeah. is if you go to the comics, another like major series that exists is Secret Wars. Right. And Secret Wars is like fundamentally this idea of nobody knows who to trust. And the scroll are a huge problem right. in, in, in Secret, Secret Wars. Wars. I don't think that they will be in this particular iteration of oh, it. But, but like they could be. They could be. You know? Like so far, the way they introduced the scrolls in Captain Marvel is that like, oh, they flipped your expectations because the scrolls are normally the bad guys, but this time they're the good guys. But it's like, what if you have good guy scrolls and bad guy scrolls and like both of them can change into the other people and sometimes they're changing into people that you can trust and sometimes they're changing into people and you can't trust them and it's like, ah, like it's gonna be, that'd be bonkers to keep track of. It's not just like, oh, you're a scroll, you're a bad guy because you transformed into someone. It's like, they could be transforming to, to, to confuse the other scrolls, you know? Right. It's like, oh. Right. So, 
the, the, <clears throat> I'm very excited about that prospect because I do think that it offers a ton of opportunity for you uh -huh. to just be like completely caught off guard. Right. I'm also terrified of it to the tune of like, you've never, like you could always go into watch any Marvel movie as a one-off and enjoy the movie without knowing like what the greater plot is. Like, right, They all have sure. like their own individual plots. It, my only concern would be what happens if the day comes where there's just too many different things you have to understand right. in order to keep up with like the plot. Yeah, um, that could be that could be a thing. They normally do a pretty good job early on of sort of explaining this, this is this set of powers, so you'll sure. understand the twist later. Sure. Um, like, certainly if you, you just walked into Spider-Man Far From Home and it was your first Marvel movie, you'd get to the post credit scene and be like, what on earth? Oh, that's true. Was that? Right. You know? Right. Um, and that, even that, though, is one of those things where on the second pass, you could find these little moments where, yeah. like, you sort of, now that you know it's actually Talos in disguise, mm -hmm. like, there's there's at least two moments that I specifically caught. I'm sure that there are more. But the one of them is when Peter's like, why don't we just call Captain Marvel? And he's like, do not invoke her, her name. name. And yeah. it's like, you know, like, Captain Marvel is like, <coughs> you know. Like, like they're God. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Like, big time savior status, super yeah. important. It's like. Don't go there. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> but then the other is like, there's this one moment where they're like, well, how was I supposed to know the scroll head sleeper cells? You right. Know, are I think, yeah, I wrote it down, whatever they said there. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I didn't write it down. Yeah, they're like, I thought, I thought scroll, the Kree having sleeper cells was top secret information. Oh, right, right, like right. That. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so there, there were a couple of moments where that even sounds like something that Fury could just be talking just about be himself, saying. but it makes more sense if it's yeah. Talos. But it's interesting too because like when once you, once you know it, there's certain things like even when Happy comes in, and he's like Nick Fury's gonna call you, and he's like Nick Fury's gonna call me, <laughs> like, right? Like right. like you think in your mind like of course Peter has more potential that he's giving himself credit for like sure. you're so worthy Peter but like right away like if Peter like if you trust Peter's instincts it's like Peter immediately understands like I'm not no like <laughs> I shouldn't be the person you're calling for a world threatening sure thing. sure 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 you know, like I know I helped and whatever but you know there's I'm, I shouldn't be the person you're calling. Right, you right, know? right. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So there's, I guess there's like sort of two sides of that coin. But So yeah. the other thing that happened, though, like with sort of the twist is Maria Hill, uh, who I thought was pretty hilarious throughout this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like like every every time like something happened, and that felt like a very Maria Hill, <laughs> like, did. like, why is this kid here? <clears throat> like, yeah. you know, this is <laughs> not worth our time. Uh, but then there's like the super cool moment where she like, you know, goes up on the roof and she's like totally expecting the thing to happen and she like bazookas the drone. Yeah, the drone. Right. And you're like, oh, what a cool moment for her. Yeah. And then you ultimately find out like that it wasn't her and it's kind of yeah. like, it was still cool, but like it really made sense for her. Yeah, like, like that felt like a very Maria Hill thing. Yeah. I don't know who you are, second scroll. Yes, so, right, right. I'm going to need some more character development on you. Which uh, maybe we'll get. I'm, maybe I'm, we will. Yeah, I think I think Captain Marvel two will probably go much much deeper into the uh, yeah. scroll Cree human yes, galactic situation. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Maybe Talos actually is the big bad villain, and we're just like all playing into his hands. Who there knows? You go. Oh, okay. Unlikely. Um. <clears throat> so the other thing that I think offers a little bit of like misdirect, and it seems like it gets pretty much like flattened in this, but. The introduction yeah. of the uh, like multiverse, basically, oh, yeah. is another thing that could get kind of confusing. That totally could. And this is one of those like where from the beginning we've sort of predicted that um, Quentin Beck is lying about being from a different universe, but is accidentally also correct that the multiverse may exist. So, so far only 50% of that is confirmed at least. Right, exactly. Right. And so the thing that I thought maybe gave it like a little extra nudge towards the like is plausible side mm -hmm. is the way that Peter reacts to it. Like he understands right. like the the science or philosophy. I don't even know like yeah. what the best way to like <laughs> Certainly you're crossing into those blurry lines when you start talking about multiverses. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> but like he at the very least seems to understand like how that could happen. Right. Uh, and so. we, we are watching a universe where they have recently invented time travel. So That's true. Um, I think that to say that it's implausible would be... 
Well, he says it. he says something, and it sounds like he's just saying a bunch of like science mumbo jumbo. But he says like that would like change the way we fundamentally understand the initial singularity. I think that was spot on. I believe I'm <laughs> very impressed. Uh, but to that end, the singularity they discuss in Infinity War is like the pff, like explosion of the Infinity Stones out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they would have to like if if what Peter is saying is that they would be like misunderstanding that it's like well that'd be hard for them to be misunderstanding since we've seen that resolve sure you know sure, so sure, sure. I, don't, I don't know it's tough multiverse is hard I, I, I feel like is, they're gonna bring Loki back the only way to do that is via via some type via of via some sort of tesseract space stone multiversing right yeah that'll yeah. be interesting mm -hmm. we'll have to we'll have to figure out how that all goes we down will. um okay so far from home was there, was, what, what were your high points? What were your low points? Oh, maybe one of my high points that we haven't even talked about. One of my, my high point for the whole movie, I think, is when he does the little arm swoop thing. Yeah, I that's, agree with that's that. That's like, oh, like, oh, it's so cute. It's amazing. I love it. Um, but otherwise is like uh, the Mysterio, I'm just going to call it the Mysterio trip, if that makes sense. Yes. You know what I'm talking it's about? It's literally on my list <laughs> okay. of top ten, or my list of favorite moments is, yeah, yeah the, the fight with Mysterio where he like, you get to see the way that Mysterio's manipulation of reality, like, can completely mm -hmm. overwhelm. Yeah. Because part of, like, Mysterio's whole thing is that he's, like, just a regular dude. Yeah. You know, like, he's not super powered. All he's really doing is just, like, making you unable to interpret reality. Right. He's got quite an imagination going. It almost seems like whatever the dro He's almost, like, making the droids do what he thinks, which is a little... The weird. I, I felt like this was. I, I'm fine with it, and I'm not gonna like critique it as like a huge problem. But the fact that they gave us the scene where he's like specifically choreographing, like, mm, no, we need more smoke over here, double the yeah. damage over there. That I think is a slight problem with the fight he has with Spider-Man in like yeah. the concrete building where he like has him, you know, all confused and everything. Yeah. Because it does seem like he's making it up completely on the fly. Right. And it's like, are you making these special effects happen with your mind right now? Do, or did you just predict Spider-Man would literally move to every single spot he actually moved to? Right, right. And like, it would just I seem like the, the amount of planning involved with that. Yeah, especially in like half a day. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Don't know about that. Um, but like I think I think that battle was absolutely awesome. It reminded me so much of just like comic books, which was like a really oh. cool way to like incorporate that type of like visual imagery mm -hmm. into what you're what you're seeing there. Uh, but even just all the different times that you know, they would have Mysterio right in front of you, and you, the audience, like totally understands where Spider Man would go to punch him, but he's actually punching a concrete wall. Yeah. And it's like that does make sense. Like, I get like it. When he pulls the crane down on top of him, that moment, I think I literally was like, <gasps> like Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. no. Don't. <laughs> right. Yeah. But uh, even, I love what I think I like the most about it is that he plans in the double fake out. Like, yes. the whole thing is just this great ruse. Like, he fakes killing Nick Fury so that he can have Nick, Nick Fury fake kill him so Spider-Man will tell him the information he wants. And then it's like, even that was fake. It's like, right. oh man, it's like Inception levels deep. Yes. You well, know? and the thing was, and they do it again in the final battle too, where he uh, he does the double fake out, where like, you think he's finally got him, you think he's finally got him. And then there's like the moment where he's like on the floor and he goes to like, mm -hmm. you know, he's actually standing next to Spider-Man right. or whatever. Um, and it's just like, even then I didn't see it coming. Like it, it kept getting me where I'm like, we know what he's going to do. We yeah. know what he's going to do. Oh, well, that's the thing. I Well, it occurred to me halfway through the final battle after he, like, abandons the illusion that, like, you're really, you're letting Spider-Man fight on his own terms all of a sudden. You're, like, letting him see all the drones. And it's like, of course he's winning all of a sudden. It's like, even if you just, like, start masking the drones again, you'll just start winning again. Right. And it's like you sort of abandon your strategy even though, for, like, almost no reason. Like, you don't have to keep doing the monster. Obviously, that's a... That's gone, but like you could keep illusioning some, and then sure enough, he does it at the end. But the other thing is that uh, they really that allows a lot of like his trickery to work, and that they established earlier is that the uh, the spider sense or the Peter tingle yes isn't isn't working, which they haven't really totally established thus far. Yeah, I think as the, like a power. The only thing I think we've seen is really in Infinity War when yeah. like the ring shows up over mm -hmm. New York and he gets like his hair stains on end. Yeah. Uh, but I had that written down as well where it's like they definitely developed this idea of the spider sense as like like almost a 
We didn't have a place to include it in the past, but like he needs it. Like right. we need to make sure he has that. Well, they tied it very closely into his like relationship with Tony, whereas like him accepting Tony's death is also what will unlock the like the Peter Tingle. The Peter or, Tingle. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like it's so funny. They don't say Spider Sense at all in the whole movie, but everyone knows what it is. Right, right, right. It's Everybody so weird about Spider Man, like everyone just knows his story. Right. You know, like we don't have to tell you about the radioactive spider, we don't have to tell you what it's called the spider sense. Like we can make fun of it and you'll already know. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's so funny how well yeah. it works. It's so funny. Yeah. Um that being said, I think uh like happy in Aunt May's relationship and even just happy mm -hmm. for me was a total highlight of this movie. Oh, yeah. Like, it's definitely Happy's best movie. Oh, for sure, for sure. And it's, I like his development too, because like in Homecoming, he's like kind of a jerk and he's like, I don't have time for this right, Spider Man right. guy. But then after Tony dies and he has like that like cheeseburger moment with uh, Morgan, it's like, you're seeing that happy. Like he's right. totally changed in a post Tony world. Right. Like it's affected him a lot too. It's definitely affected him and he's yeah. definitely like, you know, stepped into like a cool like leadership position mm -hmm. um although the the moment where and this was in the trailer so like i knew it was coming but he's like hey, you work for spider-man <laughs> i work with spider-man not for spider-man it's like like why are we getting caught up in the details right now <laughs> like not the moment yeah that was funny i like um, that yeah. yeah so i thought that was great uh other things that i really liked uh are the fact that mj and peter are high school students yeah like in the past like especially with like toby mcguire you're like we have like a 30 year old guy playing like, you know, a 17 <laughs> right. year old or something mm -hmm. here. Uh, it's just, it's harder to believe, but like even that awkward moment on the bridge at the end, like when, you know, Peter comes out, mm -hmm. um, like even like their awkward kiss yeah. feels like you're like, uh, you're in high school. Right. Like, <laughs> like, that was a pretty awkward first kiss. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, one of my favorite lines is, I'll give you a better 50-50 shot, Keith. You're pretty awkward. <laughs> you're pretty awkward. <laughs> That was, that was fantastic. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah. Did you think they would do, like, the upside down kiss, or do you think they will? I have no idea, because that's another major departure with the MJ character, is, like, you've always had MJ sort of have, like, her, sp her split interest mm -hmm. between either another guy and Spider-Man or Peter and Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And this time, she just, like, she, now she knows. Like, this yeah. is this is, like, the first iteration where she would just know <clears throat> basically from the beginning. Like, you, you skip right. the whole other story right where it's like while they're dating that she doesn't know and it's like what's the matter right right and yeah. that's another thing they did fantastic with mj is she is not the damsel in distress at all no in this movie. not really it's really ned uh <laughs> if anything is like most ned and frequently betty. ned yeah. and betty most frequently most in danger mm -hmm. um but that was another cool thing like where you know it's you don't constantly have spider-man coming in like saving mj yeah like, largely like Largely, the classmates are pretty much gone from the scene, except for the Ferris wheel, where yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like right in the middle of the. They action. do a good job of just making like the four other core classmates of like Flash, MJ, Betty, and Ned, and then sometimes Brad when, you know. <laughs> when necessary. Yeah, when necessary. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I thought that was interesting. Let's see what else I had here. Okay, so one of the things that I did not like about this movie is actually the bus scene when he puts on Edith for the first time. Oh, okay. And uh, basically, like, accidentally <clears throat> summons a drone right. to kill Brad. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a moment where I'm like, he's too smart for that. Like, he is too smart to think telling a weapons device that somebody is a target is not going to result in anything other than, like, yeah. invading his phone. He uses a lot of vague terminology with Edith that leaves you questions. Like, the big one, of course, I agree with you, is sort of like, no one saw that drone or whatever. Right. But, like, uh, at the end when he's, like, asking, is this real? And what he's asking is, is Mysterio dead? And Edith is like, yes, all illusions have been canceled. And you're like... You didn't answer the question, Hayden. Right, right, Peter, right. why didn't you ask that more specifically? Oh, and then even, like, the the command at the end that's going to ultimately incriminate him with the Daily Bugle is like, mm -hmm. yes, execute them all. And yeah. it's like, really? That's the way you're going to say that sentence? Yeah, even when he said it, I was like, well, that's going to come back to bite you. Right, I don't right, know right. how, but... Yeah, <laughs> like, that that's a problem. That was a weird way to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... That was that was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, although, uh, yeah, going back to the bus scene, I did have the notes here that I thought the baby goat, Mr. Yeah. Like baby the, mountain goat, like the fact that the entire class is like, ooh, <laughs> like <laughs> moments after almost veering off the road. Right, right, Everyone's right. Everyone's like, oh my god, what just happened? Baby mountain goats, whatever. Uh, 
And then he, so he goes up, he like shoots the thing out of the air, comes in and his hair is all windswept. And then he's like, Peter, I think, I, I'm sure you think none of us have noticed your new look. I am loving it. And well, it's even like that, he's got like the Tony Stark hair going. Right, a bit. right, right, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. So I, I I think this scene had its redeeming factors, but mm. I, I felt like that whole scenario was just a little bit lucrative. Mm. Even the fact that Brad gets like a picture of him, like putting yeah. on the suit, which ultimately doesn't end up mattering at all. It's like put on the suit, and it's like he doesn't yeah, like, put on the suit. <laughs> like, and, why like, don't you put it on right now? You making sure it fits? Right. Yeah. So, when are you gonna fix it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that doesn't matter pretty much at all. That was dumb. Um, <laughs> So that seemed like a really weird way to like turn the tables on Pratt a little bit. It was like, okay. Yeah. It also just reinforces like the whole like truth theme though. Cause it's like, yep, Peter is standing in his underwear with some random European woman. Right. And, like that truthfully did happen, but it's being obviously misinterpreted and presented the wrong way. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the one teacher who's like totally useless. He like pulls Brad aside at the end. You gotta stop doing this. <laughs> you gotta stop doing that. I'm gonna be a cool teacher right now. I'm gonna be a cool teacher. The teacher dynamic is pretty funny throughout the entire uh, with, uh, movie. Is that Martin Starr? Is that his name? Yeah, and yeah. Smooth, smooth? And JB Smooth. JB Smooth. Yeah. Smooth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, Peter has a perfume allergy? Hold on, let's start moving people. <laughs> He like gets it right, right away and then changes the seating in a way that does not make sense at <laughs> no, all. Not really. It's like he changes where everyone's sitting. <laughs> yeah, just it's like all you gotta do is switch two, two people. people. Ned's initial plan would have worked. Yeah. <laughs> just Betty, Peter, cool, done. Yep. yep. Done. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Mm. Uh, all right. I don't know. Is there anything we haven't <laughs> talked about that people are gonna be in the comments and say, I can't believe you would talk about this because mm -hmm. that happens in every review and they're like, wow. You're I right, know, we didn't touch We're on trying that. We're trying to cover an entire movie's worth. Mm -hmm. I loved when Happy threw the shield at the end. Oh my god! he's like, how does Cap do that? <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> it's like, it fell so throw. flat. <laughs> yeah, it's like, nope. Oh man. Uh, uh, so, I don't know. Yep, that, I think that that covered most of like my major, major notes about it. Um, do you have a score for the movie? Oh man, let's see. <sighs> I... I don't know. I'm gonna probably like, probably like, I don't know. 88 feels right out 88? of 100. Okay. I don't know. 88, okay. 8.8, .8, wherever you want to put it. We don't really, feel, I feel like we should develop a more consistent scale. For we need a good scale. And I feel like mm -hmm. what we need to also do is like showcase where we have ranked everything else and maybe even us as individuals be aware of where oh, we've ranked sure. everything else. That might be good. Because at some point, like, you have to make that decision of whether or not, mm -hmm. like whether or not it was better than Black Panther or something. Yeah, uh, which I don't think it would be better than Black Panther for no, me. No, me neither. But um, I was thinking a nine point two, uh, but I also know that I'm always. I feel like whenever I'm caught up in the hype, yeah, I'm like, always ah! generous. Um, always generous. But uh, no, I love this movie. I think it is the funniest. Uh, well, I don't know if it's the funniest oh, Marvel Thor? movie ever. Thor Ragnarok's yeah. pretty funny. See, this is why I can't talk. I know. I laughed a lot in this movie. Is what I I'm did do. To I say. was like, especially like the first half an hour, I was just like, man, this is hilarious. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely hilarious. Uh, so. Do you, so does it have like a where does it where does it fit in your Marvel rankings, or is that too big of a list near ah, the top bottom? It's, I would say it's, I still don't know that it makes top five for me. Mm. Um, I think probably like probably in the seven, eight spot Interesting. Would, would be would be mine, which still puts it like pretty high tier yeah, yeah, yeah. overall. I've typically got like Endgame Infinity War up there, like one, two-ish. Uh, I don't know which one I think I like more or whatever. And then it's like Black Infinity Panther War. and Guardians and like Homecoming would be like my other three big ones. See, I so still like, have Iron Man. You still have Iron Man. Like, I know. Yeah. It's like, there's so many good I ones. I love Iron Man so um, much. So, like, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like, mm, it's, yeah, it's in, like, the five, six spot right there. Right there with Homecoming. Okay. Right with Homecoming. Okay. What we yeah. really need, I don't know, like. Based on just personal enjoyment. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Have you ever watched uh, the TV show Top Gear? Uh, yes. Okay, they do this, like, celebrity lap mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And, like, every time, like, they finish, like, they put, like, the celebrity in there. We need <clears> a board <throat> like that that, like, shows where we're sliding it into the thing. Oh, where did, right. Where did it end up? We should up? have, like, a 2019 board or something. Yes! Ooh. A 2019 board. I like it. Go. Guys, I am so curious to hear what your thoughts are on this movie. Did you love it? Is it better than Homecoming? Are you excited for Phase 4? Leave all your thoughts in the towel section down below. Hey, if you're wondering where you can get the awesome 
coffee mugs you've been seeing sitting on the desk the entire episode, you can head over to carlinbrotherscoffee.com. We've got coffee, we've got decaf, tea, and hot chocolate, and of course, mugs. Guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. Please remember to leave a like on it if you haven't already, and subscribe so you don't miss any future movie reviews from us. If you want to see more movie reviews, we have a whole playlist of them right here. Or if you want to see the post credit scene from Far From Home Explained, you can check out this video right here. Guys, that's all we have time for today. Bye! Bye.